Hi there. Uh, today is day 39, uh, getting closer to that halfway point. Uh, I've got a bit of a flu. Today was not such an active Korean learning day. Uh, you know, in language learning, um, once you start down a path, you tend to follow in that path. So yesterday I started listening to articles on Echo Moskvi about the situation in the Ukraine. And there's so many over the last few days that I spent, I guess, must have been three or four hours today listening to and reading articles in uh, on Echo Moskvi and also looking up information on Wikipedia and elsewhere. By the way, Wikipedia, I'm going to donate money to Wikipedia. I have been critical of them in the past because they rather arbitrarily decided that Link couldn't have a, a little um, stub on Wikipedia, whereas, you know, Link, whoever else, uh, Rosetta Stone did. But I think it's very good the way everyone who posts an article there can expect that article to be criticized, uh, you know, reviewed, added to, amended. And I think the net result is actually quite good information in many ways better, certainly than the average newspaper article uh, or even quote peer reviewed uh, academic treatise where there's far more slanted opinions and they're remarkably quick at updating it. So good for them. And there's a lot of useful information. And I will do a separate video on this whole Ukrainian situation, which I think is extremely important to the world. However, today, what I did manage to do in my Korean, because as much as I was motivated to learn more and more about the Ukrainian situation, which I didn't really understand, um, I still tore myself away from it to get in some Korean, because you have to do some every day, or at least in something like this challenge where I'm trying to get my intensity level up, I want to do something every day. So I went through a few articles on Link, both on the computer and on the iPad, but a little bit tired with the flu. And uh, yesterday I had a conversation with one of our Korean tutors at Link and I got all my endings mangled that, you know, and I particularly had trouble with the, with the way they express the negative in Korean. And so I went back to this book, which was my Japanese book on uh, Korean grammar, and it's divided up into sections. And uh, there is a section on the negative. So I went in and they have so many examples there. They're, you know, they're... Um, uh, limited in terms of explanations, just examples. So there's very, there's so many different ways in Korean to express the negative. I went over those. So I did a bit of that review. Haven't done a lot of listening. Might have got an hour and a half in. If I feel up to it, I might do a little more Korean uh, after dinner. So basically, that's it. Uh, you know, as I've said before, on the one hand, if I just continue my listening and reading, uh, of course, my speaking suffers. Tomorrow, for example, I'm speaking with Julian at 10 o'clock. I was going to, and I think I still will, uh, video it and show you whether I've made progress or not since the last time. Uh, but when we speak, like when I was speaking to the um, uh, editor at the uh, Jungang Ilbo, when we're concentrating on communicating and we're not thinking so much about trying to get this right or that right, we actually do better. Once I start thinking about how do I form the negative? Then all of a sudden I get tongue tied and I can't do it. Uh, and of course that bothers me, but I know from experience, if I just kept listening and reading, I'd eventually get better and I'd accumulate more vocabulary. So there's part of me that says, forget it, just continue listening and reading. You're, you'll eventually get there. But then I say tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be talking to Ju Hyun. So I want to review my, you know, get back in the book and review it. Whether that helps me or not, I'm not entirely sure. It might make me more self-conscious and I'll end up doing more poorly. I don't know. Anyway, that's a brief description of what my day was like today on day 39.